Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lamb of God. You can be seated if you can. Hallelujah. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't know about you, but I came to give him glory today. I came, I came to give him honor. You know, the Bible says if you'll honor God, he'll honor you. If you'll put him first, he'll put you first. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Open your Bibles with me this morning, if you will, to the book of Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. If you don't have a Bible, the ushers are in the aisle. They're going to give you a Bible. You need to follow along with us in the Word of God this morning. Those watching online, welcome this morning. Get your Bibles out. You also need to turn. If you're driving down the road, just listen. Don't, don't look. Amen. Mark chapter 11, Jesus, we'll begin in verse 20. Jesus has just uh, the day before cursed the fig tree and they're walking back by. He cursed the fig tree because it didn't what? It didn't bear any fruit. Anybody hearing me this morning? I mean, are we supposed to bear fruit? So he's passing, <clears throat> excuse me, passing by this fig tree here. In verse 20, Mark chapter 11, verse 20, the day before he's cursed it for not bearing fruit. Are you there? Mark chapter 11, verse 20. Everybody ready? Yes. Now in the morning, as they pass by, he's talking about himself, Jesus himself, along with the disciples. They passed by and they saw the fig tree dried up at the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. Verse 22, so Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Say that with me. Say, have faith in God. Amen. We're not supposed to have faith in anything else, not anybody. Now, we can trust people and we can, you know, we can, well, let's just put it that way. We can trust people, but look, your trust has to be in God. Amen. Even to the point... Not that I would purposely lead you wrong. I wouldn't. But your trust cannot be in me. It can't be in the evangelist. It's got to be in God. Can you say amen? So he says, have faith in God. Verse 23, which happens to be our memory verse for the week. For assuredly, this is Jesus saying, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, whoever says to this sickness, whoever says to this disease, whoever says to this lack, who, come on now. Whoever says to this situation that you might be in, feel the Holy Ghost. I just might faint right here. Whew. For surely I say to you, whoever say, this is Jesus, the Son of God speaking. I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast in the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Can you say amen? amen? And then verse 24 says, Therefore I say to you, what things whoever you ask when you pray, believe you receive them, and you will have them. But if, if you want to memorize two verses, verse 23 and verse 24, get that down in your spirit. Can you say amen? amen. Now I want you to notice the last three, if you look at your Bible, the last six words in verse 23. I'm reading out of the New King James, and this is what it says. It says, He will have... Whatever he says. How many of you says that right there? And different translations. But that's what I'm reading out this morning. And that is the title of the message this morning. He will have whatever he says. She will have whatever she says. And you can insert your name in there. Billy will have whatever Billy says. Linda will have whatever Linda says. Rodney will have whatever. Come on, somebody. Whatever you say, you're going to get. I don't believe that. Well, you don't. You're stupid. You need to believe that. Amen? I remember back in the late... I feel the Holy Ghost, man. Whew, glory. I barusta. Mm, I remember. Back in the... It must have been the late 90s, early 2000s. We were following Dr. Rodney Howard Brown's ministry. Anybody in here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Know what I'm talking about. And uh, I remember telling Pastor Kim, one of these days, we're going to meet that man 
And we're going to be connected with his ministry. I knew it. Now, you have to understand something. And, and those that might not know, our anniversary for this church comes up on June the 8th, which will be, I think, the 10th is a Sunday. That's when we'll celebrate our 15th. <clears throat> But I met him, actually, actually, I met him on April the 10th, which was just, now it's been like 15 years ago. And then, for those that don't know, I mean, we're connected with his ministry. It's, it's the river. We're the river of Columbus. And so, here's the thing. I, wasn't, I was in the ministry in the sense that I was an administrator at a church. But I wasn't in full-time ministry, you know, preaching the word. And I even remember before that when I wasn't even in the ministry and I was saying this. I don't, I was just sitting out there just like you are. But I knew I would say it over and over and over. And, and I'm like, what? Well, I don't even know why I'm saying this. But I knew down, are you hearing what I'm saying? I was, I was speaking what was dropped in my spirit. I didn't know how, I, it made no sense whatsoever. This worldwide evangelist, uh, evangelist, and I'm going to meet him and be a part of his ministry, and I'm just sitting in the congregation. But it was in my spirit, and I spoke it, and I spoke it. And I would even say, I don't know, I don't know how it's going to happen. I, haven't, have a God, I ain't got a clue. It ain't up to me, but it's going to. Amen. It's about what you speak. Now, let me say this. People go to extremes with this. In other words, start speaking things that is contrary to the Word of God. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have that guy's wife. That's what I'm going to do. Or I'm going to have that lady's husband. Now, let me just say this, because that, obviously that doesn't line up with the Word of God. But if you're not careful, that just might happen. And then you'll be in a mess of trouble. Are you hearing me? Yes. You, for some reason or another, people say, you know, well, I don't know why, but we just can't have children. So I guess it's just the Lord's will that we not have children. Folks, that's not even scriptural. And it, I'm, look, mm, I'm not saying that to condemn anybody. Not at all. But the Bible says in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 22, and God blessed them... Adam and Eve, and said what? Be fruitful and multiply. Speak children into your life. Can you say amen? Instead of just taking what the doctor, well, there's just no, stand up, stand up. Did the, did the doctors tell you you can't have any more kids? There's not. Come on. That wasn't true. Hey! My, 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 my. Woo! That's what this pulpit's for. Hold my notes and to hold me up. Glory to God. Amen? Amen. Speak children into you. Like children are a blessing from God. Aren't they? <laughs> Woo! Hey! We got to test everything. What you're believing for, you've got to test it by the word. Amen? Put that first slide up for them, please. 2 Corinthians 13 and 1. It says, Out of the mouth of two, of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Now, remember, we're talking about you can have what you say. How many of you know that you can, you, there is no possible way you can go wrong by standing on the word of God? There's no way you can take a wrong turn if you're relying on the Word of God. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. That is the Word. Amen? And we've just read right here, we've just read one witnesses, one witness of the Word, and it just happened to be Jesus in Mark chapter 11, verse 23. Let me read it one more time. For assuredly... This, that means, listen to me, I'm telling you. This is what he's saying. I can't get it across. I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things he says, he will have whatever he says. 
Golly. I, I'm, I think I'm getting it. I think, I, think I, I think I'm getting a download on it right now. Can you say amen? amen? Now go to Mark chapter 5. Let's look at another scriptural witness. It's got to be backed up by the word of God. Every single time. My opinion of what I think about something is not going to help you. It might encourage you possibly, but you know what? You have to rely on the Word and the Word only, not even by somebody's experience. Experiences can be good. Well, you know, my uncle, granddaddy, daddy, mama, son, sister, whatever, died of this disease, so, you know, it just must not be. No, your experience does not change the Word of God, period. And again, that's not to condemn, it's just to stay. Listen, come on, people. And look, look, and if they passed on and they went to heaven, then praise God. They wouldn't want to come back anyway. Amen? Mark chapter 5, another scriptural witness here. Verse 25. Verse 25, very familiar story. But we need to read it. Verse 25 says, Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. And had suffered many things from many physicians. She'd spent all she had and was no, better, no more better, but actually grew worse. Verse 27. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and she touched his garments. Now notice verse 28 here. It says, for she said. Everybody say that. Say, for she said. For she said, for she said if I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Amen. She spoke it. Now, you have to remember what Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty three: 23. Whoever, say, whoever shall, shall say. Whoever shall say. Come on now. But does not doubt in their heart, but believes those things he said. He will have whatever he says. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I, you've already told us that. I'm going to take barista. I'm going to tell you a few more times. Amen. Amen. Hey! Well, for those that don't know, I just got to share it with you. Why you do that? I don't know. I can't help it. Because I'm living in the spirit. My spirit man is trying to get things out that just, it's just moanings and groanings. And I feel so good right now. I could beat half of you up right now. I'm so strong. <laughs> I could, whoop, I could whoop this whole side right here. <laughs> and if you laugh too much, I'll beat this side. <laughs> M- maybe not this side. I- I- I'm looking at somebody. I- I- maybe this side. <laughs> yeah. I thought he was standing up, but he's actually sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm telling you what, I just had a great week. Had a great week. Now here in Mark 5, verse 28, now look look at this. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. For she said, do you believe, do you think she believed what she said? Well, well, uh, she must have because according to the Bible, look at verse 34. According to the Bible, Jesus says in verse 34, and he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Be healed of this disease that the devil has placed on you. Amen. Now, it just, it just, just needs to be said. It's said. We say it a lot around here. Don't you think for one minute that the Lord put that on her to try to teach her something or show that maybe he could get some glory out of it? No, there's no sickness or disease in heaven for him to issue. Amen. Amen. Let's read them together. Verse 28, and then we'll read verse 24. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Now, I, listen, this is, we don't give many opinions here at all, but just to kind of slide something here, I don't know, but... I venture to say she might not have been made well if she hadn't touched his garment. Because that's what she said. If I can do this, if I can touch his garment, I know. And so then verse 34, and he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Her, this was her faith speaking. In other words, you know, this is, 
This is faith in action. Are you hearing me? Speaking. If I can, if I can get over there and touch that man's garment, this will all be gone. Every bit of it. How many know she got what she spoke? She received her healing. How did this happen? It happened because she believed in her heart and she spoke with her mouth. And listen, for some of you older Christians, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. If that's the way you're looking at this right now, you really need to listen closely. Plus, there's others in here that have never heard, never heard, people watching online, never heard anything preached like this in their lives. That it's just the Lord's will. It's just the, it's just the hand that I was dealt. Come on. No, it's not the hand you were dealt. The hand you were dealt is the Word of God. Then if you'll stand on it, it'll be a whole new ball game. My God. I'm going to I'm gonna have to lay out like some pads up here or something so I can just softly hit the ground. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. She believed in the heart and she spoke with her mouth. And listen, don't find that to be strange. Like, really? That's how you got born again. Think about it. Put that next slide up for me there. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. See, you confess with your mouth if you're born again, that is. Look what it says here. It says, if. Everybody say, if. if. See, here's the thing. We always think that God's just going to do something. There's always conditions that we play a part in. Do you understand what if means? If means that, look, I'm fixing to lay out some conditions for you. And if you'll do these things, then this will happen. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Now, let's just stop there a second. Oh, I believe in Jesus. I believe it. I confess to Jesus. But you have to understand what Jesus is Lord. Is he master? Is he ruler? Is he the boss? Because oh, I believe in Jesus. You know how I can tell if somebody believes in Jesus? If they're doing what Jesus said to do. Don't tell me. I'm, I'm just telling you. Hey. Amen? Amen. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. It's not hard. We make it hard. And the devil has, listen, the devil has lied to some of you and you're like, I just don't feel something. It don't matter what you feel like. That's the enemy going, yeah, yeah, see, you messed up last night. Well, tell God you're sorry. For, ask for forgiveness, repent from it, and don't do that anymore. But it's hard. No, it's not. It's not hard. I'm going to tell you right now. You will do. You will do what you want to do. You want it bad enough, you'll quit. You don't understand. Don't, I do. I do. I do understand. <laughs> You don't know me. Amen? You don't, know, you don't know where I've been. You don't, I'm talking about, and I'm not talking about yesterday. But you let him pick you up and shake you, and everything, I'm talking about everything will fall off of you. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I'm so happy I'm born again. I'm so happy. I don't look that happy, did it? But I am. Stop it, Pastor. Look at verse 28 again. Mark, let's read this one more time. For she said, verse 28, if only I may touch his clothes, I will be made well. Then verse 34, and he said, Jesus said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Her faith was speaking. That's what was speaking. Just like when you speak, your faith is speaking. Listen, here's the thing. When you doubt, you're still speaking. Are you hearing me? When you doubt, you're still speaking. In other words, you're still speaking faith. 
Yes, you are. You're just speaking a bunch of doubt and unbelief. That's all you're, it's, you're still speaking faith. You know why? Because it's a law of faith. It was handed down by God. You will have whatever you. See, we don't want to look at it like that. You just want to look at it in the positively. In other words, faith can work for you positively or negatively. Do you know who's in control of your mouth? You. You're the one that's in control of your mouth. You control what comes out of your, off of your lips. Uh, come on. Life and death are in the power of this. Sometimes you ought to just slap yourself. Amen? Or give somebody, give. I was going to say give somebody per- Permission, but then I think there may be some marriages just quickly dissolved. <laughs> she slapped me 73 times today. <laughs> okay, ladies, you don't want him to slap you. Amen. Amen. The Bible says life and death. There's no, there's no in between. It's life or it's death. And it's controlled by what flows out of your lips. Amen. People say, well, I, I just, I don't, I, don't, I don't believe all that stuff. I don't believe that stuff. Well, then guess what? Then you don't believe Jesus. Because he's the one that just said, you will have what you say. I didn't say, I didn't, you think I wrote that in there? I didn't write that in there. It was penned by the Holy Ghost, spoken by Jesus, the Son of God, your brother. Hallelujah. My brother told me. Hey, my older brother told me, hey, Mike, if you'll just speak, you can have what you say. And it's not like you think so. No, no, it's a promise. It is a promise. Amen? So, look, people that say, well, I just don't believe that stuff. You know what? They're getting what they say. I'm telling you, they're getting getting nothing. Or You know what? You know what they're getting? Lack, sickness, disease, depression. I'm just, you know, my God, I'm just going to be depressed. I know I'm going to be. Quit saying that. Why don't you just say, I'm not going to be depressed. (laughs) Is it that simple? Yeah. That's what's so amazing. That people still want to speak. You know what I'm about to say. Jump. That ain't what I was thinking, but close enough. Amen? 2 Corinthians 13, 1. Remember, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. So we've looked at two. We've looked at Jesus. We've looked at the woman with the issue of blood. Talking about you can have what you say. Now go to Numbers 13. Let's just look at an Old Testament. Let's just, it says two or three. We'll do three. How about that? Just to sum that up so you can say, well, you know, you only did two. Numbers chapter 13, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers. You remember God delivered Israel from Egypt and then he told Moses to send out 12 spies into the land of Canaan. And you know, I wasn't even going to really read this, but you know, I got to thinking. You know, there are people in here this morning that you know about the story. You know how God delivered the children out of Israel. But we've had new people, new believers come. There may be people here and go, I don't know nothing about this. So you know what? As a congregation of people, unlike an evangelist, as a pastor... You know, some, some weeks, and you've heard me say this before, some weeks, you know, we've got we to get the bottle out, and we've got to feed some people. And for those of you that were looking to eat a steak today, you might just have to sit back and enjoy a little bit of a fast and drink a little milk. And for those that, are, that we have to feed milk sometimes, you'll just have to understand that sometimes we do. We come and we feed you a big, thick steak, and you just cut it up really good in little small pieces. <laughs> just cut it, just keep cutting it, you know, so that you don't get choked. I like myself. I do. I like myself. Man, I, I do. You know why? Because God likes me. I just was telling 
Hey! <laughs> Don't be arrogant now. I was telling Jonathan because he said, you know, he felt that God loved him more than anybody. Did y'all hear him say that? I want to stand up and say, no, 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 ain't no way. He loved, <laughs> see, I, when you get to talking about the Lord, when you get to talking about him, even, just yourself, you just, he just showers on you. Because he, I know he's saying, look, look at my boy down there talking about me. Look at him lifting me up. Lift, anybody ever felt just, even, even, even before I was ever born again, maybe, you, did you ever feel special? And if you didn't, you are. You're very special. Very, very, very special. God loves you. Amen. Amen. So they send the 12 spies to go out and spy on the land. And we know that by the story, we're going to read it. My God, it's all I can do. It's all I can do to hang on. Ten spies come back with an evil report. And two come back with a good report. So let's pick up here. Numbers chapter 13. And um, let's just start at verse 1, and then we'll, we'll drop down a few verses. And are you there? Numbers 13, I hear you turning. You shouldn't have to be turning. I mean, well, anyway. That's the milk, that's the milk ones. That's okay. Amen. So, and the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, verse 1, Send men out to spy on the land of Canaan, which I'm giving to the children of Israel. For each tribe of their fathers shall send a man, every one, every one a leader from among them, 12 tribes. Verse 23, drop all the way down to verse 23 for just sake of time. It, 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 we still get the story. Then they came to the valley of Eschol, and there they cut down a branch with one cluster of grapes, and they carried it between the two of them on a pole. Buddy, that's some grapes. You carrying them on a pole? Two people? And they also brought some of the pomegranates and the figs. Verse 24, and the place was called the Valley of Eschol because of the cluster which the men of Israel had cut down there. And they returned from spying on the land after 40 days. Verse 26, now they departed and they came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. They brought back the word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And then they, <clears throat> and then they told him, and said, we went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey. And this is the fruit. So, look. Here it is. And then out of the King James, a new King James, verse 28, it says, but. Some, some, some uh, translation might say nevertheless. But the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. Drop down to verse 30. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses, and he said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, Wait, we're not able. We're not able to go up against these people, for they are stronger than us. Verse 32, And they gave the children of Israel an evil report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people whom we saw in it are even of great stature. There were, verse 33, there we saw giants. The descendants of Anak came from giants. And we are like grasshoppers in our sight, and so we are in their sight. So now, I want you to notice here, 10 of the spies, 10 of those that were sent out, leaders of the tribes, they go out and they bring back an evil report. They bring back a bad, a negative report. However, in that negative report that they come back, they, they brought back clusters of grapes. Huge, carried it on a pole, and the pomegranates and the figs, and they saw the land. They saw that what God said about the land was true. It flowed with milk and honey. It's pretty awesome. So what's evil about the report? Did they come back speaking bad about each other, griping and complaining, telling lies on each other? What, what, what made it so evil? What did they say to make the evil, make the report so evil. It's very simple, people. They came back speaking doubt and unbelief. Speaking actually against what God said. God promised them the land. Are you hearing me? And the land, listen, here, here's the crazy thing. And the land was just like God said it was. And they said it is. But 
You got to be careful with people with butts. I mean, I, I'm, you got. <laughs> You, you got to stay away from butt people. Yeah, that's better, isn't it? Everybody's got a butt. <laughs> Man, I just got to be quiet because I could run off with that right there. But, are you hearing me? Isn't that what your Bible says? Or nevertheless, it's the same thing. See, here's the thing that people will do. They'll agree. They'll agree with you about the word. What the word says about prosperity. They'll agree with you. They'll agree, they'll agree with you about what the word says about healing. But here's what they'll do. Oh, I believe God can heal, but... You understand what... The, we, we, taught, we teach around here, and for those who might not know, you know what the word but means? Do you know what that means, what it indicates? It indicates that everything I've just said, it may be true what I've just said, but... Disregard that and listen to this. I know I said all that, but this is what I want you to hear. But, look at verse 27. They told them, they, uh, then they told them and said, we, we went to the land where you, where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey and its fruit. Verse 28. But the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified. They're very large. Moreover, we saw descendants of Anak there. In other words, we saw the giants there. Look at verse 33. There we saw the giants. That's the problem with so many people. They see the obstacle and they don't see God. They're looking at that situation. They're looking at that. You don't know. I saw the report. I saw cancer there. I saw it with my own eyes. Are you hearing me? They saw giants, verse 33. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in our sight, or in their sight. Who told you, who told you that you're supposed to walk by sight? Who told you that? It wasn't God, it wasn't Jesus. Because Jesus says that we are to walk by faith and not by sight. So somebody's lying to you and convinced you that you have to believe what you see. Come on now. Quit looking at your situation the way the world looks at it. Quit looking at that circumstance the way people tell you. Get, listen. Well, that's my family members. I can't get away from them. Do everything you can to get away from those butt people. Right. Amen. Yeah. You know, that, you know, studies have been done. I don't remember the exact statistics, but I think I'll be pretty close. Like, you know, put somebody in a room with somebody and this negative person, positive person. And the negative person within just minutes has got the positive person going, I know, I agree, oh my God. And then they put another positive person in. Just a few minutes later, both, all three of them, yeah, my God, we ain't never going to make it. <laughs> and I don't remember. I think it was like, I mean, it's like maybe eight people before you put a, one, you know, one more positive person in that they finally can overcome a little bit. It's just negativity, just, it just breathes yeah. and expands. Did you know negative information travels way faster than positive? I don't know why, I just, this just dropped in my spirit. If you ever find yourself or you have somebody coming up to you and talking about a pastor of a church, I don't care whether he's called or not called, doesn't matter. You might not think he's called, doesn't matter. You hear him talking about a pastor of a church, you just, listen, you just scream at them as loud as you can and say, repent! <laughs> and they'll quit talking all that mess to you. Amen? Amen? Especially if they say something about me. <laughs> you light them up. Amen? 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 The Bible says, I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. You can encourage me, but you can't strengthen me. You can't do what he can do for me. We need one another. Come on, don't, mis don't misunderstand. We need one another. We're the body. 
And we can join together and we can pray and believe. But it comes from Him. Amen. The Bible says we're more than conquerors. Do you know what conquer means? It means victory. But the Bible says we're more than conquerors. Do you know what that means? It means overwhelming victory. It's like you're playing a football game and you win 14-13. You're victorious. But we're more than that. We beat them 68 to nothing. He don't even get to score a point. Glory to God. Amen. Not just win. We won. No. We, we, they don't have any chance at all. Don't even know why they showed up. Glory to God. Amen. Plus, we're the head and not the tail. Not sometimes. All the time. We're above, we are never the butt of anything. We're always on top. I don't feel, stop it. I don't feel, feel, what feel? What's feeling got to do? I feel sick. Well, feel well. And if you feel like that, say, well, you, you don't, you don't look so well. Well, I feel well. And then you get away from that person. I don't know if I can live like that. Then be sick. Then just be depressed. Do what you like. (sighs) Be well. Amen. Who lives in you? Greater is he that lives. Great, great. There is no greater. The one that created everything you can even put your eyes on knows you, created you to be wealthy, prosperous, healthy. Come on, somebody. You know, not lacking anything. Ah, I tell you what, I, it, it, it is not something I don't know, but it just hit me like a ton of bricks this last week. If you will pursue him first in everything you do, you don't even have, it's like he said, I don't have any needs because I'm pursuing him. And he's just, it's just going to come. I don't even have to, oh my God, what are we going to do? I've said it, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Tithes and offerings, it's not, it's not, we need your money, thank you so much. It's up to you. This is going on no matter whether you hear or not. Because this is not a man-made thing. This ain't, this ain't J.C. Penney's. And I, they, hey, I think I'm going to manage this store for a little while and then I'll put out my resume and see if I can go over there. I can make more money over there. Garbage. I've seen it happen. I come out of it. I was in that. I'm meddling. Too many places treat church like it's, like it's, like it's pennies. You know, and I'll send my resume out. Because, you know, I'm just kind of tired here. I'm tired of these people. They ain't giving me no raise. I need a raise. And I'm going to send my resume out because I know they're looking for a preacher over there at that town over there. And that's where my, that's where my parents live anyway. I mean, my, my wife's parents, they live over there anyway. And we, maybe I'll go out, I'll try out. They're, listen, they're going to let you go in about two years anyway because they're going to get tired of you too. You can't fire me because you didn't hire me. <laughs> you can leave. But you can't fire me. Because I was hired by him. Oh, hey, hey, on a job I didn't even put in for. I wasn't trying. You know what I was doing? Just serving God. Uh, uh, let me say this. If you don't want to be promoted, quit serving. Because if you're serving, you're going to be promoted. I'm just telling you right now. You, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. Well, I don't want to be, I don't want to be promoted. It doesn't matter. It don't matter what you want. Is it helping anybody at all? Yes. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 6.10. You know, we, 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 you don't have to go there. You know that we did this the other day, a few weeks ago. Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Be strong in the Lord 
and the power of his might. It's, none of that's got, all you got to do is rest on him. Can you say amen? amen? And do your part. Ten brought back an evil report. Two brought back a good report. Doubt and unbelief will always be evil. Every single time. But faith, faith speaking from the word of God, will always bring a good report. Even though, even though somebody says, listen, they call you up and they say, you know, I got this situation, health situation. What? It doesn't matter. Let's just use health. I got this situation in my life. And then the evil report says, well, what did the doctor say? How long? What do you got to do? How long you got to do this? How, you, know, you know, the statistics are pretty good. It's like, I think 30%, it's 30% are, are healed. And, you know, at least that's a, that's a decent chance. I mean, you know, even baseball, if you hit 300, that's pretty good. And then somebody else says, okay, doesn't matter what doctors say. Doesn't matter about statistics. The Bible says that by his stripes, I'm healed. I'm just telling you right now, whoever's making that phone call, if you'll say that, I'm telling you, that'll help them. But the other one is just like, yeah, chances aren't real good, are they? We just hope we give the, we just hope we give the doctor guidance. You don't need to get guidance from the doctor. You need guidance from the Lord. And now the Lord can work. Come on. Understand what he can work through. But we're talking about the word opposed to a report. I, I just go back again. The doctor said you cannot ever have children again. That ain't from a bunch of pizza. That's a baby right there. You know, I'm just, you know what I'm saying. Amen. Hallelujah. You have a Pastor Mike? Giants are right in front of me. I see them. I see you. So, what difference does it make what you see? I'm trying to get you to understand. Quit looking at what you see. Amen. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith in the Word of God. And that's it. I'm not saying it's not there. You know, I'm not being foolish. I'm just saying, oh, so what? Amen. If God, the Bible says, if God is for you, then who can be against you? Nobody. Nothing, no devil, no person, no government, no nothing. If you're on God's side, you've already won. Why don't you act like it? Amen. Amen. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, just listen to this. It says, while, you know this, while we do not look at things which are seen, but we look at things which are unseen. How do you do that? How do you look at things that are unseen? With, with eyes of faith. Can you say Amen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Glory to God. Amen. Are you still in Numbers 13? Are you there? Look at verse 30, because we're going to look at... You know, we already know what the ten unbelieving spies said. So let's look at what Caleb had to say right here in verse 30 real quick. Numbers 13, 30. Are you there? Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, say he said, and he said, let us go up at once. Not, let's get, let's get, the, let's get the board members together. Let's go and let's talk about what we need to do. And let's, maybe, maybe we can make this happen by this time next year. No, 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 no. There was no discussion here. Caleb said, let's go up at once and take possession. Look what he says. For we are well able to overcome it. That's more than a conqueror. We're well able. It's not like, you know, it's going to be tough. We can do it. No, no. We got this. This is not even going to be any great effort. Come on now. And verse 31 says, But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able. Don't you want to hit them? We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And, we gave the, and, and, and they gave the children of Israel an evil report. I refuse to be around 
We are not able people. We're just not, we're not just, no! We can. We will. We are. Can you say amen? Amen. So what was evil about a report? What was evil is they said, they spoke, they spoke an evil report on what God said they could do. They actually spoke just, they actually spoke against God. Do you not see it that way? They spoke against God. That's not pleasing to him. God loves me. He does. But he's really ticked off. He's upset with you. Because the Bible says in Hebrews eleven six, 6, without faith, it's, Im- it is, it's impossible, the Bible says, to please him, to please God. It's impossible. Go to Numbers 14. Just go one chapter over there. Look at what Joshua had to say. Because we see what Caleb said. Let's see what Joshua had to say. Verse 9. Numbers 14, 9. Are you ready? Want me to hang on? Say, hang on. Verse 9 says, this is Joshua. He says, only do not rebel. Everybody say rebel. Rebel. Don't rebel against the Lord. Listen, folks. Do you understand what rebellion is? That's what rebel is, rebellion. The Bible says that rebellion is that as the sin of witchcraft. It doesn't say that rebellion is witchcraft. It says the sin of witchcraft. What separates you from heaven? Sin. Y'all better hear me. Rebel against the Lord. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Their protection or their defenses have departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. Can you say amen? Amen. Is the Lord with us? I said, is the Lord with us? Absolutely he is. Then what do you have to fear? Somebody just preached. I said, what do you have to fear? Nothing but the Lord. And we're not afraid of him. We respect him. There's a great reverence. There is a fear of the Lord. That's the problem in the church today. There's no fear of the Lord. And he loves me. He forgives me. He loves me. Just, I'm going to do this. I say it so many times. I mean, Listen. If you really love the Lord, you'll do, you'll do what he said to do. I'm, amen. amen. You're putting pressure on me. There is no pressure. If you feel pressure, it's because there's, a, there's an issue there. Because there's, no pre- there's no pressure on me. Any pressure on you? Feel any pressure? Feel any pressure? You feel any pressure? I'm going to stop there because you might find somebody that says, yeah, I feel some pressure. <laughs> then we'd have to deal with that right then. I don't feel any pressure. I live a holy life. I live a purified life. I seek God. I need to pray more. Anybody else need to pray more? I need to fast more. Anybody else need to fast more? But I live a holy life, man. Amen. Amen. Look what Caleb says. You, back, you don't have to go to Numbers 13, but let me just read it. Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. And then Joshua says right here, he said, hey, hey, guys, the defenses, they don't have any defense. They've, it's departed from them. And he says, look, the Lord's with us. Do not fear them. You got these two guys. Joshua and Caleb are speaking by faith in the Word of God, and the other ten are actually speaking in faith with faith. Fear. And they're just speaking the devil's words. The devil's always going to come looking big. He's always going he's always going to magnify himself. When he's he's nothing. Do you understand that? You want to know who the real grasshopper is? The devil.
You see a bug at your house crawling on the floor, what's he do? Ah, no. no. There you go, honey, will you clean that up right there? You stomp the thing. It can't do nothing to you. That's the way you got to see this. Because that's exactly the way it is. He's. Amen. You know the rest of the story? The Israelites side with the majority. You know the majority many times ain't right. They side with the majority. And then, then, then what happened? They, they go around the wilderness for 40 years. 40 years. As a matter of fact, jo- listen, Joshua and Caleb are the only two of that original generation of people. The original, because there were some young kids. That, they were the only two to make it in. Hmm. The others didn't make it. Where were they headed? The promised land. They didn't make it. Why? Because they rebelled against what God said to do. I don't know. I don't know, folks. And I'm not, listen, I'm not just talking about rebelling against God in His Word. If God's told you something to do, well, I just don't want to do that. I just, I just want to, you know, I just want to be comfortable. Just I love the Lord. If the Lord's told you something to do, you best repent and get to doing it. Yeah, but He loves me. Nobody ever said He didn't love you. They did Oh, they didn't make it. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. I said, thank God for the blood of Jesus. Can you say amen? Amen. You have to understand, everybody involved in the story got what they said. Amen. Quit speaking and believing an evil report. Yeah, but I'm afraid. Don't be afraid. I can, I, you know, to, I can say, I understand that what the Lord's called you to do or asked you to do, the reason there's a fear factor there is because it's so much bigger than you. You just have to go, I'm just going to take a step. I'm just going to take a step, and I'm going to take another step, and I'm going to take, because he's not going to let you sink. He's not. You may feel like it. It may feel like I'm just about it he's not going to let you sink what he called you to do he'll equip you to do it'll happen and if it's something that you can do on your own then God didn't call you to do that because he ain't going to get any glory from it it's when he mm -hmm. come on now I'm just kind of shy doesn't matter what's that what so I'm shy you don't look it you don't know. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know where I came from. It, you, if you, for those that know me, me standing up here doing this right now, it's a miracle. <laughs> now, at home, you know, with just two or three people or something, yeah. But a crowd of people, mm. I stick my foot in my mouth too much. How <laughs> many know what I'm talking about? No, we'll get ready to end this. Go to 2 Corinthians 4. 2 Corinthians 4. Remember what we're talking about this morning, having what you say. Whoever says of this mountain, whoever says of this mountain, be cast in the sea, believes in his heart, doesn't doubt. You have what he says. You can have whatever you say. Yeah, but Pastor Mike, you know, I, I hear you, but that just means certain people like, you know, like yourself, like your pastor, an evangelist. Uh, you know, a prophet, what, you know, very, very, just real spiritual people. No, the Bible says, I say to you, whoever, whoever, it doesn't specify, it just says whoever. You're a whoever. Everyone in here, everybody listening to my voice is a whoever. Now you can cop out the way you want. Well, you know, that's just, there's a call and a, it, stop. 
He created you. To do what? To just sit around and enjoy yourself and enjoy your flesh? Verse 13, 2 Corinthians 4, 13 says, Paul is speaking to the church at Corinth here, and he says, and since we have, everybody say we have. We have have the same spirit of faith. He didn't say we're we're praying about it, we're trying to get, you have it already, right now, born again or not, you got faith. Right now. And since we have the same spirit of faith, According to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. Every single born-again believer in this place this morning and listening that can hear, hear me this morning, we all have the same spirit of faith. Every one of us. We have to because we were born again. We got the same amount of... You have the same spirit of faith as a woman with the issue of blood has. You got the same spirit of faith of anybody in the Bible that spoke it forth. Caleb and Joshua. You got the same spirit of faith as Caleb and Joshua. You have. It's just a matter of what you're going to do with it. Can you say amen? Now go back to Mark 11. We'll end here this morning. Whoever's coming this morning can come on. I want to end by something that I heard. Pastor Kenneth Hagin say that the Lord told him. How many of you have ever heard of, 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 of Kenneth Hagin, Sr.? How many of you have not? It's okay if you have. You have never heard of him. You need to go look him up. Powerful man of God. Powerful man of God. Here's what he said. And Pastor Hagin had, I, I can't remember right now, four, five, six, somewhere along in there, actual visitations from Jesus. Came and sat and talked with him. How many? How many? Four, five, something. It's quite a few. More than you. (laughs) And he said uh, he was praying and ministering to the Lord, and he said the Lord asked him, he said, Kenneth, have you noticed in Mark 11, 23 that the word say is mentioned three times while the word believe is mentioned once? Now watch this. Are you in Mark eleven twenty three? 23? Are you there? If you're not, get there. You've you got to see this now. This is what uh, Pastor Hagen said that the Lord showed him. Verse 23. For surely I say to you, now that say right there can't be counted because that's Jesus speaking. Okay? We're talking about us saying. Whoever says, there's one, to this mountain, be removed and cast in the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes, there's one belief. That those things he says, there's number two, will be done. He will have whatever he says. Three says, one belief. Are you with me? And he said the Lord told him this. He said, my people primarily are not missing it concerning their believing. We all believe. Are you hearing me? Because we've been taught. This is what he said. He said, because we've been taught to believe and have faith. And that's what's happening this morning. We're, 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 we're teaching and preaching faith. He said, where my people, my people are missing it is in what they're saying. Are you hearing me? And he told Pastor Hagen, he said, you're going to have to do three times as much preaching and teaching on the subject of saying than you are on believing. Oh, wow. Wow. Whoa, glory to God. Well, that's not in the word. Well, yes, it really is. We just read the scripture. As a matter of fact, the times that Pastor Hagen would ever, the Lord would ever show up, he would ask him questions. And he would always ask the Lord. He would ask a question and the Lord would say something. and And he would tell the Lord, can you get me three scripture references? And most every time that would happen, what would the Lord do? You've read it all. He'd give him like four. See, here's the thing, people. You can have a heart full of faith, but you can have a wrong confession. And it just cancels out everything that your heart was full of. Matter of fact, in all honesty, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth, you, you think you got it, but it's just coming out wrong every time. You're speaking negative. 
You're speaking actually against the Word of God. And again, that's not to condemn, it's to help you. It's to encourage you to watch what comes out of your mouth. Can you say amen? I mean, we we certainly need faith. Come on. You know I'm not saying that. Amen. We need faith. But just as important, we got to watch. Keep the mouth shut. It's that, old, it's that old saying, you know, your mama taught you years ago. If you ain't got nothing good to say, don't say nothing at all. Right. Some of you just need to be silent for like three years. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Whoever says to this sickness, to this doubt, to this situation, to this cancer, to this lack, to this obstacle, to c- whoever says to it, be removed and cast in. Get out of it. Go back to hell where you belong. And you don't doubt in your heart. Come on now. You believe those things that you say. You will have whatever you say. Glory to God. Hey, hallelujah. Stand to your feet this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hey, Garusta. Marostoromo. Jesus, guard my mouth. Help me. So this morning, what I want to do, feel led to do, is that if you have a situation, it doesn't matter what, it, it does, just whatever, to where you're, you're, you, you, you just, you're struggling to get over, you, you're so, it's such a habit to say things like, you know, I can't, I just can't seem to get over this cold. And that sounds insignificant, but guess what? You just can't seem to get over it. When we ought to be saying, I rebuke this cold. You get, a, yep, yep, well, you know, your nose is all red. You don't, you sound like you got a cold. I know. I'm getting over it. Today, today. Or whatever. See, I know it may sound insignificant, but you still got a cold. I can't seem to get past this. I can't seem to do. Are you with me? And and look, and you've you've developed a pattern in that. This is not being negative. It's just it's just our it's where we are. It's where people are. It's their lives. It's what's going on in their lives. But you want that to change today? Come right down here, quickly, quickly. Just come stand right here. I'm on my 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 words are going to change today. Today is the today is the last day. It's the last day you hold this for me What's your name? Stephanie. Stephanie. I, I, I sensed a few minutes ago that the words from right now, from now on, not that you're negative or everybody's just, we all, come on, we all don't act like, oh no, I'll never say anything negative. That's not true. But from right now, till Jesus comes, it's like, it's like being delivered from alcoholism. You just don't have a taste, it's just, you're just like me, I don't. I used to be, I don't, it's not even, I don't even think about drinking. It's not even, it's just, it's repulsive to me. That's how, that's what your words are going to be like. It's just, just as soon as you feel like, I'm not, I'm not saying that. The Lord's just going to, you're just going to be, you're actually going to be surprised at how positive and what word comes out of you. You're just going to go, my God. 
this is fun. And because of those words, you're going to begin to see things manifest, not only in just your life, but your whole family. And he, I, when I say whole family, I'm not talking about a row of people. I'm talking about a whole family. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? So I'm just going to come by. I'm going to lay my hands on you, anoint you with oil, which is biblical. If there be any sick among you, call upon the elders of the church, anoint you with oil. You say, well, I'm not sick. Well, your mouth is. And your mouth ain't going to be sick anymore. Right. Come on, somebody. Amen. So all I'm going to do is come by, do what the Bible says do, and then you're going to have to pick up the rest of it. Because life and death is in the power of the tongue. You've been here before? What's your name? Yeah. Brielle. Can you just move back one, just make sure I can get in there on you. There you go. Lift your hands to heaven. When I get to you, lift your hands from he to heaven. I thank you for the fire of God, Father. I thank you for these lips. We do nothing but praise you, exalt you, and glorify you. That's it. She's going to speak positive things. She's going to speak the word in Jesus' name. Lift your hands to heaven. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled, be filled, be filled. That's it, that's it, that's it. Lift your hands to heaven. Lord, I thank you that you've brought him out of darkness into light. And there's a heart that is growing and being formed like never before. Thank you that these lips will speak of the glories of God. And that's it in Jesus' name. Lift your hands high. Thank you, Lord, for the fire of God. Positive, words only from the Word of God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for the faith to come and stand and go, Lord, clean me out from top to bottom. Thank you for the anointing of God that rests in His life. You speak it, it'll happen. You just keep speaking it. You keep speaking it. In Jesus, the fire of God. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Nothing but wellness. That's, that's it. I speak wellness. Hands high. Thank you, Lord. Out of your mouth shall come nothing but praises and glory. and all. That negativity is gone. From these lips will be the praises only. From the heart. Full of the Word of God will speak in Jesus' name. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Ha! <laughs> yes, yes. No worry, no worry. There is no worry nor fear. The Lord has you on this planet for a reason and a purpose. You shall live long, a long, long healthy life in Jesus' name. Lift your hands to heaven. Yata, Simona Moche, Rinda Mamri, the fire of the Holy Ghost, the fire burns out. All that, it's all gone in Jesus' name. Bootsy KK, he's a liar. He is a liar. You are the head and not the tail. You realize that the greater one lives on the inside. Be blessed, be blessed, be blessed, be highly exalted among your peers, for you carry the, the actual presence of the Lord Jesus. Glory, <laughs> glory, 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 glory. The sweet presence of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that you wrap your arms, squeeze tight, let her know on the inside that all is well. The fire of God burn anything that doesn't belong. Just burn it out right now. In Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus. Lift your hands to heaven. Thank you for the plan, Lord. There's a plan beginning to unfold. 
There'll be dreams at night. Keep that tablet. Keep the tablet next to the bed. And when that comes, you write it down. And then you walk it out. Well, I'll, I'll remember it because it's from the Lord. No, you won't. You won't remember it. You write it down. You must write it down word for word. And then, oh, glory to God. Then walk it out. Thank you, Lord, that he speaks your words and your words only. Let many be touched by the words that come from the lips of this man. Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Lift your hands high. Mm-hmm. High. Like he's everything. Yes. That's been the deal. Start speaking. Start speaking. Speak it. Just, just start speaking exactly what you want. Down to the very letter. Oh, glory to God. That's it. That's it. Let that anointing rest upon you. And quit. There's no figuring. There's listening. It's not a, uh, I meant figure. There's no figuring. You just listen. Then you do. I'll wipe away every bit of fear. Nothing but just absolute God faith rules in Jesus' name. Turn it up for me a little bit. Borusta, you are the, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Still plenty to do. Oh, there's plenty for you to do. Nowhere near are you finished. Matter of fact, it's just getting started good. And you start speaking it forth. And watch, watch it happen right before your eyes. You, you, you're going to be astounded. You're like, oh my gosh, this works. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Start speaking it over your family. You just start declaring it. You don't even, listen, you don't even have to bind the devil. Don't, don't even give him any credit. Don't, don't spend any time talking to him. You just give God praise and declare what you want done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Lift your hands high. Fresh, 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 fresh bread. You want fresh bread in the oven? Just start speaking it. Start speaking it. Lift your hands to heaven. Oh, what, what a, just what a peace. What a, an assurance. It's, there's, you feel it. You feel such a peace like, oh, it's just done. I can, with God, I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Put your hands to heaven. I hear these two words. Look at me. Trust and obey. Trust. Once you trust, then obey. Amen. Lord, I thank you for a word spoken into a heart, into a spirit. That's exactly what she'll do. She'll trust you at every turn, every corner. And she stays on the straight and narrow path Guard these lips. Just as soon as she, you, just as soon as something about comes out negative, you just lock jaw. Do it, Lord, so that she just speaks just your word in Jesus' name. Hands high. Be blessed beyond measure. May every single word that comes out of your mouth be positive, be encouraging, be uplifting, even uplifting to your own spirit. Feels good to be positive, feels good to encourage. To every single person she comes in contact with, all through the work day, at home, at recreation, wherever, in a restaurant, just encouraging. We reap what we sow. So you sow encouragement all get ready for much encouragement in Jesus' name. Lift your hands high. Things upon your heart that you are believing for, that you've asked for, that you have said, hey, pray with me. Hey, agree with me. 
Now you just speak it into existence. Not when, not how, just speak it. And it'll come to pass in Jesus. Oh, glory to God. You are and have always been above and never ever once in your lifetime have you been beneath. You have felt it. You have, it has looked that way. But God said never from this day forward, you are on high. And your time is not up. It's just now time to get ready and get started. God's gifted you with talents, and you will use them for his glory. In Jesus' name, lift your hands to heaven. No more. No more criticizing yourself. No more being hard on yourself. From this day forward, you will rejoice in the Lord that the Lord made you the way you are. That you're precious in his sight. That you go about doing the will of the Lord. You begin to speak. You, 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 you're good at it. You're good at speaking the things of God. But every now and then, a little something creeps in that just tears that down. No more. It's all gone right now. In Jesus' name. It's all gone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Lift your hands to heaven. Up the fire. I mean a hot, hot branded fire like your brand of cattle, has been branded upon your heart. It will never go away. It's even there now. Lord, bring it out. Bring out that fire. In Jesus' name, I declare it. Lord, we love you. You're beyond our expectations. You are a supernatural God. And I thank you for every single person here today, that every single person listening to the sound of my voice, that we will have what we speak. And we will speak only your word. We give you all glory, honor, and praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Give the Lord another hand clap of praise. God bless you. Hey, hey, listen, hug somebody's neck on the way out of here this morning. Bless them, bless them.